it's yet another incident, as we are reporting, that took place on Saturday. It, for, for reading about it and just knowing what has happened over the last 18 months with the emergency medical services crews being regarded or being taken as soft targets, it doesn't look like uh, we're winning the war against the uh, 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 robberies um, uh, targeted at medical emergency services personnel. Thank you uh, and good morning to everyone. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I think it's, it's, uh, it's not necessarily our war to win. I think this is a, a scourge that affects all of society. Um, and and uh, since our staff uh, and the volunteers work within these communities, uh, they become soft targets as well. Um, but but there's, there's some encouraging developments and, and uh, you know, we, uh, we're receiving tremendous support uh, from all spheres of, of, of government, both municipal and, and provincial, as well as national. Uh, and so, so I think it's a, you know, there's a, there's a concerted effort uh, made uh, to, to try and address these things. Yeah, what kind of support are you receiving from national government and provincial government? So I think, um, you know, uh, sadly, uh, the Western Cape's not the only province uh, affected by these. And so we do see uh, in provinces, uh, particularly um, Gauteng, KZN, even in Eastern Cape now, uh, we've had uh, staff being attacked. Uh, and so it's become uh, quite a, a, a discussion point uh, for many of my colleagues in the other services, both private and government. Uh, and that's coordinated through the national department's uh, efforts um, as well, yeah. Yeah. Recently, the MEC in the Western Cape for Health, uh, Norma French Mbombo, uh, had uh, barred paramedics from what uh, was described as red zones. I mean, uh, do your uh, volunteer paramedics, do they go into the so-called red zones? Yeah, so uh, the area that was affected, in fact, there were two incidents this week, and both incidents uh, happened in areas not designated as, as red. Um, even in though in Danone, for example, our, our staff have um, put in measures, even though it's not designated as a red zone, have put in measures where we would wait uh, for uh, SAPS officials to, to escort us, uh, and they've been a been great assistance. Uh, volunteers are a part of the, 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 the cycle. They've, they volunteer with us, uh, and so therefore the same... Uh, um, protocols are put in place, uh, although some tend to, to operate on their own. Uh, I think this incident um, caught everyone unawares. Um, uh, it was a legitimate call, uh, and uh, there was no indication that it was going to be t t to turn violent. Uh, it's just an opportunistic nature of, the, of, of these attacks. Um, you, you say there were two incidents at the weekend in the Cape Town. What's the other one? We've only been reporting, uh, or I'm aware, about the Dunoon one. Yeah, there's also been one in an uh, uh, area called Wallace Dean uh, in Cape Town. Uh, this incident um, was uh, the crew had responded to a, a patient with a complaining of or, or allegedly being stabbed multiple times. And uh, when they arrived on scene, someone flagged them down uh, and uh, in stopping uh, and preparing for the patient, they, uh, they were then approached by three men uh, who, who uh, pointed firearms first at the driver uh, at the, and, and then at his colleague, um, demanding uh, their, their, their cell phone and wallets, uh, and before before walking off. You know. So that, that was particularly traumatic. That involved one of our crews, um, uh, and again, uh, you know, in, in the non-designated red zone. So the, it makes the nature of trying to mount an attack to this, or a, a countermeasure to this type of incidents, very difficult. Yeah, it looks like your, your members are being targeted for personal valuables and some of the equipment is stolen, but also mm -hmm. there's been damage to your property. Realistically, what can you actually do, I mean, on the ground uh, to make sure that uh, paramedics, in, uh, whether they are full-time paramedics or volunteer paramedics, that they are safe? Mm. So I think there's a, that's where we're quite encouraged by the work that's been done, uh, both at a, at a, at a, a municipal and provincial level uh, with all our stakeholders. Um, it's quite simple. The easiest thing is, is for the communities to secure and provide safe passage for our staff. Um, I, I, I would make an appeal very simply without uh, getting through all sort of policies is to say if the neighbor on either end of the, of the patient requiring 
care uh, came out into the street and the neighbors opposite them came out in the streets, uh, we'd have uh, a lot safer areas for our communities. So I think at a very basic level, uh, it's just tighter communities looking after one another in order to secure the safe passage. But at a, at a stakeholder level, we've seen lots of work being done by, um, by um, the Metro Police, uh, SAPS officials, uh, community policing forums, and the neighborhood watchers. Uh, and so I think uh, there's, there's much uh, uh, to take encouragement from uh, and a lot that still can be done. Okay, well, good luck with that. Thank you very much. Uh, that's Dr. Shaheem DeFries from the Western Cape's Emergency Medical Services.